A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Telling a woman that she can't be an elder is a nonsense rule. If they claim to be in the body, we let them have it. Donald uh, Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. There are six Christianizing the American dream. I said that you, uh, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. Sawing is a blessing from God to make you rich. Treating Jesus like a lottery ticket. The Lord spoke to my heart. Then very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you with me. I'm asking you to brush your hair. Look at who sharply, that's what God commanded. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Master's Dog, episode 154. I am your host, Norm, The Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. So, The Master's Dog is a podcast I do dealing with false teachers, false doctrines, false gospels, uh, basically anything that comes against the truth of God's word. As the introduction video says, the quote from John Calvin at the beginning, I bark. I make noise when people attack God's truth. And so, it started out as a podcast called Faith and Beliefs Refuted which was specifically to uh, refute the segment of the Saints Unscripted, formerly known as Three Mormons. Their podcast, uh, they formed, they made a segment called Faith and Beliefs, which was, they started with the LDS Articles of Faith. And I committed to responding to all of those to show how they did not line up with biblical Christianity. And when they finished the 13 Articles of Faith, they continued on, David continued on doing other issues of doctrine and theology and so on. So I also committed to respond to all of those. And again, that's where the name Faith and Beliefs Refuted came from. Down the road, I decided I wanted to expand and deal with more than just Mormonism, more than just these guys, and deal with you know false teachers like Fertig and Osteen and, and so on, and Donald Trump and Hemet Meta, atheists and whatever, whatever... Um, False teachers were out there I wanted to deal with. So that's where the master's dog came from, the quote from John Calvin and so on. So there's a little background for those who are new. We are continuing, and it's thanks to you guys who like, share, comment. All those things makes algorithm send the uh, that guy, um, and I was calling him that long before uh, Space Jam, so I didn't steal him. But he sends it out to the people who might want to watch it, and so... Thank you, thank you, thank you for those who are faithfully watching these episodes and commenting and liking and sharing. Uh, I'm even seeing the episode views are going up significantly. So, hey, once again, thank you. I owe that all to you guys. I won't ask you to like the video yet because you haven't seen it, but you can subscribe, hit the notification bell, get all the content that I release here on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. So, we are back this week. We are, again, this episode we are dealing with our friends over at Saints Unscripted uh, and the Faith and Belief segment of that podcast. We are going to respond to a video that David did talking about the Apocrypha. There's not a whole lot of argument I'm going to get into. We can talk about the Apocrypha and so on. Is it biblical? You know, whatever. We can, we can have those discussions. We're not going to do that now. There's a different thing, there's a different angle that I want to take off of this. So I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of responding while David's talking this time. Well, you know me, I probably will. But I'm just going to let him go and then we're going to deal with the the elephant in the room at the end. So, all that being said, here is our friend David Snell from Saints Unscripted. And uh, what is the Apocrypha? All right, so we're gonna talk about the Apocrypha today. It's a term you've probably heard thrown around every now and then, but it can be a tough concept to grasp sometimes simply because it can mean slightly different things to different groups of people. In this episode, we'll try to figure out what the Apocrypha is, why it's controversial, and we'll talk about what its status is among Latter-day Saints. Well, that's what I'm most interested in, is the status among Latter-day Saints. So, 
So as you know, the Bible is a library of dozens of different books written at different times by different people. But the fact is that not everyone agrees on which specific books deserve to be included in the Bible canon. For example, if you look through a Catholic Bible, you'll find that their Old Testament includes several books that you won't find in a Protestant Bible. Armaments chapter 2 verses 9 to 21. Protestants view these either. Catholic inclusions as apocryphal, meaning they are not accepted as sacred scripture. They are not part of the Protestant Bible canon. Catholics, on the other hand, view these works as deuterocanonical, which you can learn more about in this quote. Now, what we do or do not consider to be inspired scripture is sort of a big deal. So why do Catholics and Protestants disagree on this? It's complicated. Protestants and Catholics have been debating this topic ever since Protestantism became a thing during the 1500s. That's when reformers like Martin Luther took a look at the Catholic Bible and said, yeah, I don't think some of these books should be here. Many Catholics believe that Luther rejected the Deuterocanon simply because some of the teachings within those works didn't conform to his belief system. Protestants say, no, these books actually teach false doctrines that contradict the rest of the Bible, so they can't be considered inspired scripture. Catholics say, well, the original Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, the Septuagint, contained these books, and the Septuagint was considered scripture in the time of Jesus. So if they thought these books were canonical, so should we. Protestants respond, while that may be, nowhere in the New Testament does Jesus quote from these apocryphal books, suggesting that he probably didn't recognize these works as scriptural. Anyway, there are lots of different arguments. Protestants feel that Catholics are adding to the Bible, while Catholics feel that Protestants are taking away from the Bible. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! Theologians on both sides try to find answers by digging deep into the history, but it's understandably difficult because when it comes to ancient history, there are a lot of pieces of the puzzle that we just don't have. We try to make inferences based on the pieces we do have, but frankly, it often turns into Catholics, Protestants, and even Jews, both ancient, medieval, and modern, all being suspicious of the biases and interpretations of each other, and the debate continues on. There are lots of points and counterpoints in this debate. I'll leave you plenty of resources in the description if you want to dive deeper into this, but what do Latter-day Saints think about the Apocrypha or this Deuterocanon? Here's okay. Now here, this is the this is the part that I want to get to, um, and I really am just pausing because I don't want to get. I I have to comment at some point in time, so there's no uh, copyright infringement stuff. So now I'm giving commentary on the video, so it's fair use. Um, but this is really the the key. I mean, we again we could we can discuss the apocrypha. We can talk about all the different reasons whether or not Protestants really think Catholics were adding to the Bible or any of those things, or if we just don't recognize those books as uh, as canonical. And that's that's the reality of it. It's you know whether you know Luther. Well, it doesn't line up with my beliefs. No, it's just that these do not carry the same authority as the other books. So that's a whole nother discussion for another day, something that I'm really not an expert on in any way, shape or form. I uh, would have to study up on it and one day we'll, we'll get there. But this, what the LDS uh, response and what their view of the Apocrypha is, is the key here. And then you'll see when I get into my uh, rebuttal. Here's the deal. The Latter-day Saint position is actually quite simple. It's not based so much on historical arguments, but rather modern revelation. In 1833, the prophet Joseph Smith was working on the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, or JST, which we've done an episode on if you want to learn more. Though the Protestant Bible he used for this project did not consider the Apocrypha to be canonical, it did still include the Apocrypha in between the Old and New Testaments. Now, I want to pause here just to point out that different sources sometimes have different lists of apocryphal books, and sometimes one apocryphal book will go by different names. Well, that's just maddeningly unhelpful. Why are these yes, things never clear? For the purposes of the rest of this video, we'll be referring specifically to these 14 works, which are the works contained in Joseph Smith's Bible. Please note that there are some works in this edition of the Apocrypha that aren't even considered scriptural in the Catholic faith. Anyway, as Joseph was reviewing the Bible, he ran into the Apocrypha and had the question, well, should I include the Apocrypha in the JST or not? He brought the question to God. 
The resulting revelation is recorded as Doctrine and Covenants section 91. It's only six verses, so I'm gonna read the whole dang thing for you. Verily thus saith the Lord unto you concerning the Apocrypha, there are many things contained therein that are true, and it is mostly translated correctly. There are many things contained therein that are not true, which are interpolations by the hands of men. Verily I say unto you that it is not needful that the Apocrypha should be translated. Therefore, whoso readeth it, let him understand, for the Spirit manifesteth truth, and whoso is enlightened by the Spirit shall obtain benefit therefrom, and whoso receiveth not by the Spirit cannot be benefited. Therefore, it is not needful that it should be translated. Amen. I love that answer. Latter-day Saints believe that all truth comes from God. We believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ ultimately embraces and encompasses all truth. Okay. Let's let's address that situation just for a moment. So Joe is there and he's doing his thing with the Apocrypha or the Bible and he's making his own translation and adding and subtracting and doing what Joseph did to just create his own uh, beliefs. Again, here is where you get the, the idea that things are, are added or taken away because they don't line up with Joseph Smith's ever-evolving uh, belief system. So this is a, this is a key thing here, and I I would say probably the fact that God gave the revelation. Well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Joseph was didn't had done more than he had, and I'll learn how to talk. Joseph had done more than he had intended to do, and was probably just exhausted and was like, I don't want to have to go through and make stuff up for this stuff too, when most people don't even recognize it as scripture anyway. So. Again, do I believe that anything that in any way that Joseph Smith was ge getting revelation from God? No. Was he being deceived by Satan? Possibly. Was he just a con man making stuff up? Probably. And we don't believe that as Latter day Saints, we have a monopoly on all truth. We'll take it from. Yes. See, and again, I now see this is where I got to go. Joseph said. This is the only true church, which would mean you have only the truth. Yeah, well, monopoly on the truth. Everybody has their own little bit and this and that and the mirror that fell from the wall and Bob has his piece and blah, blah. That's just, again, ridiculous. Your claim that you're the only true church and that every other church is false. Um, again, you need to back that up and you need to own that. So wherever we can get it. So while we don't include the Apocrypha in our scriptural canon, and while it's not something you're going to be reading from in Sunday school, we do believe that there is truth in it. And we believe that those who study it with the Spirit of God as their guide will be able to benefit from the truth it contains. Check out the links in the YouTube description for more info on this subject. Watch some of our other videos while you're here, and have a most excellent day. All right, so there we're going to end this. Um, here's my point. Here, here's my rebuttal. So why would you not now, because the, the it's been put out there about the Book of Mormon, why, why would active members of the Mormon church right now not pray about the Apocrypha and, and let God tell them specifically? Again, you know, you're, you're told to pray about the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith said that it's the most correct book of any book and you can get closer. But also, you're not supposed to take his word for that. So why are you not praying about the Apocrypha the way that you pray to receive uh, revelation, burning in the bosom, whatever it is that you're receiving about the Book of Mormon? Which leads into other things. And I had meant to put pictures up in here, but I did not. Um of a man named Matthew Gill from the UK who started his own branch of Mormonism. Uh, I think it's called the branch of truth or, or something to that effect. Created his own book of scripture called the book of Jeronek and put it out to the world. But yet active LDS members will not pray about the book of Jeronek. They won't pray about the Apocrypha, but yet, even though Joseph Smith gave his words on, on that the Book of Mormon is correct, you're supposed to pray about it. Again, there's just too much there that is not... What's the word I'm trying to use? Not collaborative. But it just doesn't jive. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't fit together. You, you can't... You're... you're 
feet are planted firmly in midair. There's no foundation to what you're dealing with. It's it's postmodernism at its finest, and it, it's just well, this stuff we do, and this stuff we don't, and well, you you know, and and allowing people to well, your truth is your truth, and my truth is my truth, and blah 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 blah. We have a truth. Jesus said, "He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through Him." And we have His Word, the Bible, that we have. It is very uh, reliable in the fact that the Bible that we have today is what the Bible that they had during the days of Christ, or well, that were put out after Christ died. So the Old Testament we have, the New Testament as it came to be, it wasn't put together in Nicaea. It was the letters that were ra- were passed around the churches and so on. And we, we have very good evidence that just based on massive amounts of manuscripts that the Bible is, is reliable. And so, as Jesus has revealed himself in the Bible, is how we should worship him, worship him as the second person of the Trinity, as co-eternal and co-omniscient and co-omnipresent with God and so on, with God the Father, right? And not the, the heretical counterfeit that has been presented by the Mormon church. And the counterfeit scriptures that have been presented by the Mormon Church and so on. So, although we really didn't get too much into the the Apocrypha itself, which I'm not really that concerned about, the issue of the day is, why aren't the Mormons praying about that the way they pray about everything else? And why won't they pray about other scripture that has been introduced by other men claiming to be prophets? There's a uh, an inconsistency in worldview here that, should really be uh, addressed and recognized. So there you go, guys. Thank you for taking the time out to watch. This was a pretty short episode, um, which is great because I got to go to bed. I'm tired. And uh, yeah, so thank you again. Now is the time to like, share, comment, do all that stuff. If you disagree with me, let me have it. I'll take all that smoke. And, uh, And subscribe, hit the notification button, do all that stuff. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I owe you all to do all that, those things, comment and, and share so much for the increase in subscribers and video count. So give yourselves a hand. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.